There it is. That's that's a good picture. What's up, family? What's up? Make sure we yeah we good we lit now. See if we live. Are we live? I think we are. Then I got all my settings in place. I got a haircut in about an hour. What up, Barber Fidel? How you doing? First one I see in here. Yo, comment, comment if you if you here. There we go. There we go. We got we we got the comments coming in. What's up, everybody? YouTube is my home, man. It's my home. What's up, y'all? What's up? Yo, so I wanted to um do a live to be real transparent with y'all, man, and and um just spend some game with you guys and have a conversation and see what I can do to 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 help y'all right now. Uh what up, Ace Barber? How you doing? Ace Barber been supporting heavy. Tie dye cuts is in the building. What's up? What's up, bro? I made it to a live chat. Wow. <laughs> Many weathers in the building. Yo, YouTube is lit right now. I might I might need to start uh getting back to the YouTube vibes. I'm about to switch I'm about to switch my glasses. I'm about to I'm about to get cool on y'all. Cause all this glare on my glasses is, is crazy right now. This is the clearest live stream ever, H D. Yeah, I, I I definitely been doing my research. I spent some money. That's even worse. Cause you guys can see the screen I'm looking at. Uh, JC the barber, what up? What up? Yes, class in Spanish. Not right now, man. I need to get my game up on on that. Marv is in the building. Yo, this live is crazy. I like this better. Cause you know why I like this better? Cause I can switch. I can switch to to whatever my screen is. You know what I'm saying? I can say, yo, Ace Barber, what's good, bro? How you doing? Hope you're doing good. Omar is in the building. What's up, bro? Like, I have a lot of control. And this is the software I've been using on the online academy to really get, you know, a lot of engagement and interaction with, with our live streams. But yeah, I just wanted to have a conversation. Number one, please smash the like button. It helps the live streams out. If you want to see more of these live streams, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'll stop doing Instagram to do this if, the, if, if, if. The engagement is there. You know what I'm saying? So, what up, Dre? What would it take to get my garage door opener back? The same thing it would take to get my gate uh, key back. Because I live in a neighborhood where you got to have a gate key. Or it's the worst neighborhood in the world. Better Instagram for sure. That's dope. London's in the building. That's what's up. So, let me ask you guys a question, man. Um... So I know I know I'm not crazy here when I when I say yo the barber industry um I hopped on YouTube not even knowing the live was going on. That's what's up. Um I know I'm not crazy when I say we need we need a little bit of help when it comes to making barbering a profession. And some of y'all might be struggling in some you know, form or shape, and and I, I'm always gonna drop tutorials. I got a tutorial lined up for Monday. Every Monday and Thursday, I'm dropping stuff. Studio 45 is official. It is happening. Like it is. It's literally. I feel like giving me the platform I needed to really focus and be creative. And it's a space where I can do a lot of things all at once. But what I really want to know from you guys is what is a missing piece? What is the piece that you're missing? If you're in barber, if you're if you're a barber in a barber shop, if you're in barber school, um, if you're trying to do something beyond that, if you're trying to be a barber but you also want to be a platform artist, or you you want to be an educator, or you want to open a a, a, a school one day, like how can I help you? And I really, like right now, I, is not the time for what is your favorite Clipper. I'm sick and tired of those questions, man. We we, we got to move on beyond that, y'all. We got we to gotta be on another level. I want these questions to, to level up your questions, guys. Don't ask me what my favorite Clipper is. Don't ask me if I zero gap my Clippers. Please. <laughs> Bro, for me, uh, you're someone to follow. I love your videos and the way you teach. You're teaching my respect. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. 
No doubt, no doubt. But let's talk, man. Let's get real, yeah. Uh, a better apprentice program. I want to open a shop. Thanks for the, all the knowledge. Low fade tutorial, please. Yo, people haven't been asking me for low fades like that, man. <laughs> bro. Bro, why you doing me like this, bro? <laughs> I'm done with y'all, yeah. That's a great question. Hold on, hold on. So questions are rolling in. Questions are rolling in. So Robert said, how do I combine business with barbering without opening a shop? That's a great question. This, this one I'm going to tell you. In every industry, in every industry in the world, people are doing things behind the scenes or on the side without it having anything to do with barbering. And, and there's, a, there's a few things involved. That might be the money market. That might be the commodity market. That might be the stock exchange. That might be real estate. Um, there's all kinds of... That might be a business, franchising. There's all kinds of routes to go. And what's interesting is that we are in an age and a place where there's so many creative ways to invest. There's people doing Airbnb. There's people who are doing um, strictly just online businesses, flipping websites, um, uh, going to, <laughs> going, going to, to like Gary V's always putting, going to, um, uh, um, you know, garage sales and flipping stuff there. But there's so much more than that, right? There are people who are specializing in bridging a gap. And that might be, listen, a company who does amazing things with clippers, but they need t-shirts. And there's a person who is literally the specialist when it comes to t-shirts. They got a factory um, they built a relationship with, and they're just a the middleman, really. It's you don't have to have money to invest these days. You don't have you don't have to have a following to build something these days. And when I, what I mean by that is when you don't have to have money to invest these days, invest your time into yourself and into your expertise. So let me give you an example. So if you are, look, if I was to go and try to create, for example, a clothing line, I would have to learn materials. I would have to find the right relationships, the factories. I would have to understand the difference between embroidery and screen printing and all this stuff. Like literally, it's like going back to school. I don't have time for that. So what I want to do is find somebody who has experience in that and has an expertise in that and wants to make 10% in between. So for a lot of you guys, 10% and a lot, you might want 100%. Some of these guys only want 5%. But that 5% on a $100,000 order is real money every month. You see what I'm saying? That 10% on a $100,000 order once a year, if they can open 10 of, 10 of those accounts, that's $100,000 a year off of your expertise. So you got to think bigger. You got to think bigger. Like you got to you gotta invest in yourself to the point where you have an expertise in something, right? That could be that could be you're so good at opening barbershops that you're, you know what I'm saying? It, it takes you nothing to the point where you're literally just facilitating the next person with money and you just want 10% of that shop. You just want 10% of that shop. I got you. 10% of that shop. There's a lot of people who want to open barbershops. I'm sure a lot of you guys who are barbers um, have been approached by customers who are like, yo, I want to open a barbershop. I'll invest with you. You know what I'm saying like if if you really know how to open a barbershop and you know how to scale it, say yes every time. All right, so that was that question. And I'm skipping. I'm I'm going I'm going straight to updated. I skipped all the questions. Um and I'm um I'm in real time. So if you have another question, let me know. Smash the like button, please, guys. So concise the barber. He said how to save money daily from the shop. So I would start out with saving the first haircut every single day. Put it away. Put it in a shoebox. Put it in a safe. 
If you do not trust yourself, you have to have self-awareness and understand, bro, I'm not good with money. Take that first haircut money, give it to your wife as soon as you get home. Um, and what you'll find is that first haircut, five days a week, if you're charging $20 a cut, that's over $100 a, a week that you're saving. Over $100 a week times 50 weeks, if you take a two-week vacation once a year, that's real money. That's real money. You see what I'm saying? So if 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 you do that, great. But then start with that. Build your clientele. When you start, when you start getting to a point where your book save save your your first two cuts, then your first three cuts. And if you really really want to get to the next level, you need to leverage someone or an app or technology. And what I mean by that is I use capital. So. Anything that's deposited into my account, 30% of it gets put into capital. 30% of it gets put into capital. Capital is an app. It's called Capital. It starts with a Q, not a C. And what happens is you choose a bank account. You should only have, you should have a hub. You should have a hub, right? That's one bank account. You can have a personal account that the hub goes to. You can have a savings account that the hub goes to. Your wife can have her own account that the hub goes to. And you can pay your bills out of that hub as well. But but that hub is where all the money comes in. And any money that comes in and hits that hub, capital is automatically going to pull 10%. Then 20%. Once you start feeling comfortable with 20%, you got to get uncomfortable. Go to 30%. Once you start feeling comfortable at 30%, go to 40%. You know what I'm saying? Continue to build what you're doing in your in in your in your work life and you might be comfortable at 70%. I know I was. I, it was insane. Like I was saving so much. My wife was like, "Babe, uh capital is taking a lot of money out of our account, but we were still living the same lifestyle, so it was okay." You see what I'm saying? So use an app like Capital, leverage that technology to make your life easier. Cool. So thank you for that question. Yeah, you could say pay yourself first is the answer. Rich dad, poor dad, all that. Pay yourself first. Any other questions, guys? Please smash the like button. Yo, this is this is the that was the the wound. <laughs> that thing was pussing the first day when I I slipped in the shower. So Armando Santos said, how to avoid paying high taxes when you start making really good money. You don't want to avoid paying high taxes. Like, I save a lot of money knowing I'm going to have to pay real taxes. I have a plan knowing that I'm going to have to pay real taxes. Because if I don't pay real tax, when you start paying real taxes, that's a sign you're doing pretty well. You don't want to go out of your way to avoid paying taxes. You don't want to do that. That's not what I'm trying to do whatsoever. What I'm trying to do um, in my financial life is I'm trying to do well, put as much money into... Um, I don't make any money off of my businesses. 100%. Look, you want to know how I pay my bills and what I live on? I live on YouTube money and I live on Academy money. That's how I pay my bills. That is 100% my income. I'm being 100% transparent with you guys. That is how I make my money. If I do a class or if I go on tour, that's a bonus. But how I pay my bills is YouTube. Thank God for YouTube. Um, is my academy, my online academy. And if I go on tour or if I do classes, that's a bonus. That's how I pay for a living. Two forty-five. Every single penny that comes in goes right back into the business. Um, headlines. We're opening. We just signed our lease for our eighth location this year. Um, that goes right back into the business. And so what happens is you make some real money, but what you end up doing is taking all that money and putting it right back into the business. So the way the IRS sees it is you didn't make money. 
And so like when people say, yo, Amazon made all this money and they, they didn't pay no taxes, that's not really what happened. What happened is they made a billion dollars they, after they paid all their wages because they are a good paying company, right? And every city in the country wants an Amazon warehouse to open up because they know it's going to help the economy in that city. So they're, they're fighting for Amazon. They're like, please come here. We'll give you this tax break, this tax break, right? Because they know at the end of the day, it's going to help their city. They're going to make employee taxes, sale tax, sales taxes. Uh, more people are going to be moving in. They're going to make their tax money. Um, but then they do a 0% capital tax because Amazon takes all that money and puts it right back into the business. And you know it's true because you got this dude, Jeff Bezos, trying to go to space. Then you got him flying drones to deliver packages. Then you got him opening, you know, trying to compete with Netflix. Then you got him talking about, you know, um, com um, competing with UPS and FedEx. They're obviously putting all that money right back into the business. So if they're investing it back into the business, that's a write-off. And that's the thing. If you're going to be a businessman, you have to understand that in order to pay little taxes, you can't make money. You're making money, but you're not taking that money home and buying a new car from it. You see what I'm saying? You're taking that money, putting it back to the business so you don't have to pay, give that money to the government or a portion of that money to the government where they're going to use it towards who knows what. I'd rather put it into my business knowing where that money's going. Do you get what I'm saying? Um, hopefully that helps. So next question. Thank you, Armando Sanchez, for that question. Next question. And I got my first thumbs down. Yo, there's 150 some people on here. Can I get some thumbs ups? Please. Can I get some thumbs ups? What separates a good barber from a great one? That's an amazing question. What separates a, a good barber from a great one? Great freaking question. It's not how good your haircut is. It's not. And you know what I'm saying? Like, I get a lot of compliments for my haircuts, but that's not that's not why I'm I've been successful. The reason I've been successful is because I've been able to give my clients value way more than just a haircut. My clients, when they come come to the shop and they sit in my chair, they already know what they want to talk about a lot of times. A lot of times they're ready, I want to run something by you. Like <laughs> I swear that's one of the biggest lines I get is, yo, Chris, I want to run something by you. They're, they follow my they follow my YouTube channel. They follow my Instagram. They're inspired by what I'm doing. My Instagram is my life. It's not my business. When I, I tell people all the time, and I hate the advice that a lot of schools give. They tell you to make two different pages, a, 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 a barbershop page. Or your barber page and your personal page don't include the two. And I and I'm I'm gonna be the one that tells you include both because your clients do not come to you for just a haircut. A lot of y'all got barber pages and that's all you're posting is a haircut. But the way you build a real business, the re the way you build a real clientele that's gonna last the test of times. And I did it. I did it during the recession, guys. You see what I'm saying? The way you do that is you gotta build beyond just what your haircut is. Because if that's how you're building your clientele, if you're building your clientele based on the quality of a haircut, the day you have a day off, you're gonna lose that client. And we all have our days off. It's gotta be way more than that. You see what I'm saying? And so my clients come in and they already know. They got, like they're thinking about their appointment for a week and they're saying, yo, I gotta run this by Chris. Yo, Chris, what you think about this, bro? I was looking at this house. I'm thinking about buying it, but the interest rate is this. It's over here. It's not. There's no good schools around here, and I give them. The, I give them my advice because they respect me. We have a mutual respect for one another, and and we value our time together. And and that 30 minutes with me, they value. You see what I'm saying? Every there's. A, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not cocky for a second, bro. I know there's plenty of barbers that can give the same haircut that I can give. 
but I'm constantly investing in myself here and and in these hands. You see what I'm saying? So I'm I'm just trying to be the best human being that I can be so that I can give as much value as I can all around. That's what I would say separates a good barber from a great barber. There's bar- bro, there's barbers that can cut circles around another guy, but if that other guy knows knows some stuff, knows how to knows knows customer service, knows how to treat someone, um, is knowledgeable, they're going to build their clientele much faster than a guy who can cut really, really good hair. So that was a great question, though, man. But I, if you guys notice, I do everything that I do is on my page. My family's on my page. My businesses are on my page. YouTube is on my page. Everything I do, it is my life. It is my life. That's it. I don't do anything I don't want a part of my life. I don't I don't befriend people I don't want a part of my life. We have one life. Why waste why waste time with people that we dread being around? Why waste time trading our time for things that that we don't we we don't wake up in the morning exciting to do? You see what I'm saying? So So Yanes the Barber said, How much capital did you start with? Um, that's a great question. Start with to do what? Start with to do what? That that I I'd have to answer that with a question, because um, I don't know what you what you mean. Oh, Kemi, yeah, my bad, Kemi. Let me see if I could if I could go straight to the super chats. I forgot Kemi did the super chat. Hey, you, he did the super chat. We I gotta reply, yo, boss, yo. This uh, this ain't a lot, but I just wanted to say thank you. One request though, can you unblock me on IG? Phase by Raph. I was roasting my boy on your live, bro. I blocked you. You must have you must have been saying some crazy stuff, bro. I'm a, I'm gonna look. How do I unblock people? I got my Instagram right here. Let me see how I I don't even know how to unblock people. I, I swear I don't have I don't waste no time. I be blocking people left and right. Let me see. Um how do I unblock people? Does anybody know how to unblock people? Because I, I really do want to unblock my boy because he was he, he he obviously he don't have an ego. He he's worth unblocking at this point in time. Can anybody tell me how to unblock my man's right here? I went to settings. I go to security. Let me see. All right, nothing in security. Let me see privacy. Blocked accounts. Let me see if you in here. Um, what is it? Uh, fades by Raf. You're not on here, bro. I think you got me blocked. Look, this is my block list. And you not on here, bro. You're not on here, bro. You might have me blocked, actually. Because I don't have you blocked. All right, let me let me catch up. Keep him blocked. That's mean. <laughs> That's me. I don't know why, bro, but you're not blocked on my account, bro. All right, so uh, Aunt Carter said, I just finished school but wasn't as hands-on as I thought. 
Uh, what would you recommend to get my skills up? Bro, I'm sorry to hear that. I hate all the time. I would say, man, continue the education. Go take some hands-on classes. That's that's the best advice I can give you, man. It helped me a lot. Are we going to make enhancements with spray bottles ready to spray on the client? Nah. Nah. It would be it would it would be like thirty dollars a bottle, bro. It would be like twenty five dollars a bottle. You know what I mean? So and the enhancements just work so well because you can control it so well. If I did a spray bottle, uh, if I did a spray bottle that just did one spray, that that defeats the purpose. Yo, here MLS said, uh, straight savage show the whole block list. Yeah, I don't care. I'm transparent, man. Like, I got nothing to hide in my life. Nothing. How much capital to open a shop? I can show you how to open a shop with 10 bands. I can show you how to open a shop with 50. You know what I'm saying? It just, it's, it depends on what you're trying to do and where you're at. So I got a super chat here, so let me let me answer this. Hey, Chris, I tried joining the online academy, but it said there was an error. Can you please help a brother out? I really want to join. Robert, I'll tell you what. Let me know what your Instagram is. I will screenshot this right now, and I will make sure I reach out to you. So, uh, Armando, I can't be putting you on here all the time, but you you ask good questions. So, Rum Barber is going to be at EWP2 in March. That's my event on Clearwater Beach, the number one beach in the country. They'll be on stage for that event. So, that's that's how we collab. Yeah, I, I, I'm telling you, I could show you how to open a shop with 10 bands. But it ain't going to be the nicest shop. It's going to be It's going to be a hood shop. But if you want to shop like headlines, it's going to be like 50. It's going to be anywhere from 30 to 50. Here's the thing. There are some there are some plazas that that have specifications. If you want to be in a nice plaza, these nice plazas like they'll put in the lease that you got to use this sign guy. And and then and you you be like, "Yeah, cool. I'm good. Let's do it." And then you go get your sign made outside of your store and you get a invoice for ten thousand dollars just for the sign in front of your barbershop whoa so it just depends on what you're trying to do it just depends on what you're trying to do if you're going to be in a high-end plaza be ready to spend some money because just in first last and um security deposit it's going to be 10 bands and then you add the sign, that's another 10 bands. You're at 20 grand. You haven't even bought a damn barber chair. You haven't even bought a garbage can. You haven't even bought a Sanic strip dispenser. And you're at 20 bands. <laughs> you know what I mean? So. Let's continue with the questions. Let's see. So Byron McCants, Byron McCants said, if you're someone with multiple businesses, should you only have one page or separate for a certain target audience? You should have a certain page for each um, business, but you should always have your personal page talking about your businesses. Because if your personal page can't talk about your business, it's probably not something you should do business in. Whoa. Whoa, that's bars. That's super bars. People all people say it all the time. Warren Buffett says it all, all the time. He doesn't do anything that he doesn't understand. Right? He doesn't get into the tech stuff because he don't understand it. But Warren Buff Warren Buffett on a daily basis, he goes to McDonald's and he gets a cheeseburger. He goes he gets all his furniture from this furniture store. He gets his insurance from Geico. And guess what? He owns all that shit. He drinks a Coke on a daily basis. He drinks all, he owns that. So 
every business this man owns, if he wanted to have an Instagram, he could post all his businesses because it is who he is. It is his life. There is no work-life balance here. If you really want to be able to scale the things that you get involved with, it's got to be something that you can put on your personal page. I ain't never heard nobody say that. It's worked out, though. It's worked out heavy. I took this. Okay, hold on. This is a good question. Brandy said, um, I'm a master cosmetologist. Should I go back to school for barbering license too? Um, if you want to use your razor, I would say yes. But I would tell you this. Go to a barber expo. Um, look at what the culture is like. Ask some questions. Ask people, you know, what is the barbershop life like? Go work at a barbershop. There's a lot of barbershops. I mean, this is going, this is going to hurt a lot of people's feelings, but there's barbershops that will hire you because inspectors don't really care. You know what I'm saying? And I'll be honest with you, I don't care. Go over there if that's what you're passionate about. And if you if you want to feel assured that you're not going to get in trouble doing something you're passionate about, then it's worth your time to go get your barber's license. Thanks, Brandy. Yo, we got 163 people on here live this entire time. Please smash the like button, man. I would really appreciate it. So Beto said, uh, what would you say to a barber that's uh, good at saving but doesn't know what to invest in something? I would say, why? Why don't you know what to invest in? You're good at saving. You're financially literate um, or responsible at least. Not literate, but responsible. Why don't you know? Yo, guys, this is some weird stuff, but I got to go to the bathroom. Give me five. Give me two minutes. I'll be right back. If we are still in the 160s, I will be so appreciative. I'll be right back. Two minutes. Yo, we at 170. What the hell? 170. How we went up? That's crazy. Hey, I love you guys, man. I'm doing live streams every week on YouTube from now on. I'm doing. You guys are showing so much love. I appreciate it so much. Like that's crazy. Yes, I washed my hands. By the way, they're still wet. Okay, I got a cut, so I didn't. I tried to stay away from there, but. That's crazy. Oh, and by the way, um, again, every Monday, every Thursday, I'm dropping content, guys. Every Monday, every Thursday. Heard the flush. <laughs> All right, let me ask. Let me answer some questions. Let me see. Uh, no, you gotta go to school, guys. You gotta go to school. You gotta get your license. What investments do you suggest? Please advise. It depends on what you're at. This, this, is, this is what I would say to you. If you ain't got shit, if you come from um, a background where you're, you're um, uh, medium income or low income or just downright poor, I love you, but you got no business. Investing in 401ks, in IRAs, in mutual funds, in none of that stuff. Like, you got no business saving every penny. 
and I know that that's gonna like that's gonna confuse you guys because we've been taught we've been brainwashed something entirely different. Let me let me explain what I'm saying. We've been taught to hold on to nothing. You ain't got shit. What are you trying to hold on to? You see what I'm saying? You have to figure out how to be able to leverage a few things. That might be your expertise, your time, someone else's time, someone else's money, your credit, um, your your knowledge, right? Those are the things that you got to invest your money in and your time in, right? Get really, really good at something. Okay, if you're not going to do that, protect your credit like crazy. And don't use your credit towards anything that isn't going to make you more money. That means don't use your credit towards a personal home. Don't use your credit because that takes money. That's a bill. I get it. It builds wealth, blah, blah, blah. It's better than renting. But you're using your credit and you're using your debt to income ratio to go buy a car. You're using your credit to go get a, a apartment, right? Get your or to 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 get a house that um not an apartment, but to get a house that you don't even want. It's just cuz it's cheaper than rent. That's crazy to me. Okay? You have to be able to use these tools to leverage yourself so that in this lifetime you can build some wealth. And what we've been taught our whole lives is to put our entire time, all of our sweat and tears and blood into something that is going to finally retire us at damn near 70. It's crazy to me. So look, your average mutual fund, the like on average, it's like six, seven, eight percent returns on your investment. You realize selling one product in a salon can get you a 20% return. You need to get good at selling product, okay? You realize being able to raise your price by, let's say you're at 20 bucks right now. Raise it to 25. That That's what? What, what type of return is that on your investment? And the investment you're making is literally just a verbal one, okay? That's what? That's a 25% return just go, by going from 20 to 25, okay? Invest in an added service that will make you more money. S&P, microblading, um, uh, man units. I don't know what it is, but that's going to give you so much. That's why people, you always hear them saying, Investing in yourself is going to give you so much more returns than investing in something else or someone else. So that's what I would tell, tell you to do. Invest in your education before you invest into anything else. Okay. Invest into, into a business that you're good at. And if you're not good at any businesses yet, invest in internship, in learning. Take a job, whether it's a pay cut or not. Let's say, let's say you're working at a barbershop right now, um, cheap rent. You don't really like the way it's operating, but you make a lot of money. You're booked all the time, um, and it's the best place for you. At but you want to level up. You want to be more than just a booked barber. You want to open a barbershop one day. You don't want to learn from that barbershop owner. You might have to take a pay cut and go to. A, a, a barbershop that's charging more in booth rent because he knows his worth as a barbershop owner so that you can learn how he operates his thing. You might want to work your way up to management where you know, damn, um, I'm not getting, I sh I'm probably worth more as a manager, but you know what? I'm going to learn so much in this position that I'm going to bust my ass to get that, to that management position so I can invest in myself and learn things that I can't learn in college. And then you'll get to that level where, okay, I have, I have, I have mastered this whole barbershop thing. I've developed a system, and now I'm in a place where in the next three years I can own five barbershops because I got this. See what I'm saying? I don't know. It's a different way of thinking. 
That's how I've always been. That's how I've always been, though. Here, here's one thing that I feel like the industry doesn't know about me because I got my YouTube followers and then I got my Instagram followers. And when I get on Instagram, I feel like people really don't know me. Like they know, they know I got followers on YouTube and they know I got barbershops and they know 245 or whatever. But I don't think they really know me. I don't think they really understand that I'm 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 I've devoted my life into changing my family tree. So when it comes to finances, when it comes to business, when it comes to entrepreneurship, when it comes to um Yo, guys, I owned, I opened my first barbershop when I was 22. I had two barbershops at 23. I had three at 24. I had six at 25. I had seven at 26. The, I had Tomb 45, which is a bigger company than I've ever imagined ever owning before I was at Think about it, guys. I don't. I at twenty seven, I never had to work another day in my life. The barbershops, if I focused on that, would have been good enough. Between the YouTube and the barbershops, I never had to work another day in my life. So it's not about congratulating me. It's about it's about bro. Like I'm I'm trying to share this with you guys. I'm trying to tell y'all that we've been fed so many things in our lifetime when we were in school when we were like even our parents who were fed what the schools were teaching were feeding us that so what i'm saying is yo guys there's alternatives to this there are people who are becoming distributors for one company and getting rich based off of that because they understand the culture but you got to try to figure out how you can get away from trading your time for money or filling a gap. Look, Ant, I gotta block you, bro. Like, I gotta block you now. You, you're wildin'. Why are you doing this? Why are you doing this, bro? So now I gotta go to YouTube and I gotta go block this guy. <sighs> Hold on, guys. Let me block uh, Lil' Ant. All right, little ant is gone. All right, my bad, guys. So, where we at? Smash the like button, guys, if you're feeling the live stream. How little ant still here? What the hell? This man got 55 um, pages. Okay. You said Bob Clips on Run Barber's BMAs? Yeah, I did. How, how often am I going to do this? Not, um, I want to do this. I want to do this more often. I'm going to do this more often on YouTube than I do Instagram because it's lit in here. I was doing it on Instagram because there was so much more engagement, but damn, this is, this is dope, man. Um, so Francisco said, how, how to gain contacts to create merchandise or products? How much is startup? Again, it depends on what you want to do, man. Like, this is what I'm going to tell you. You're never going to be, it depends on what you're trying to accomplish. You're never going to be able to get into distributorship. You're never going to be able to compete on a, on a real um, commercial level. Like, you see these brands at the hair shows. You can't do it if you're going through third parties, man. You got to you gotta kill the middleman. I'm going to be real with you. Um and if you do have a middleman, it needs to be somebody who's doing work with big brands. 
um, because they under they work on low margins, but they make it up on volume. You see what I'm saying? Um, you know, for us to make that transition from being um, a small brand, I had to make I had in the beginning I had to make the product myself. You see what I'm saying? So like. Fubu, Fubu has an amazing story. Um, Damon John, he has a book called um, The Power of Broke. And it's the story of Fubu. And um, he talks about when he started Fubu, he was making the product himself. He was making the clothing himself. His mother had a, a sewing machine. He bought another sewing machine. And him and his mother, were they were literally sewing these jerseys together, these shirts together, in order to be competitive and be able to get into distri distribution because distribution was used to some crazy numbers. You can't compete um, with these brands unless you have crazy volume or you don't have any labor cost. And so that's why you got to make it yourself in the beginning. So if you want to do pomades and you want to do all this stuff and you got and you got visions of being the next Paul Mitchell like I had, you got to make the shit yourself in the beginning uh, and then and save every single penny you can and scale that thing up until okay i can start hiring people you know what i'm saying and and that was that's really what what happened i couldn't afford to have anybody manufacture my stuff and i wasn't willing to kill all of my margins because somebody else was making them at low volumes so there's my answer for you uh francisco The thing is, not a lot of people can work for free for 10 years. Whoa. Not a lot of people can work for 10 years and for free for 10 years. And that's the that's the reality of an entrepreneur. Can you okay? So Davy said, uh, "Can you get in trouble? Can you get in trouble for uh, cutting hair at home with no license? You can if you're charging. You can't if you're cutting for free. Anyone can cut hair for free. You just can't charge for it." How you get your uh, your shit game so fleet? I invested in myself. I invested in myself, man. I invested in myself because I knew I saw the trends. I saw where the barber industry was going, and I said, I'm going to lose my value if I do not learn shit work. I'm going to lose my value if I don't elevate my game and I'm not able to teach what new trends are coming in. I, I woke up three years ago. I started doing sh sheer classes left and right, man. As many classes as possible. Cost a lot of money, but it paid off. Biggest struggles. That's a great question, Francisco. Biggest struggles as a YouTuber. Everybody counts a YouTuber's pockets. Everybody's looking at YouTuber's pockets. But what y'all don't understand is that so if I make, if I make, let's say I make a hundred thousand dollars this year off of YouTube, this year off of YouTube, that's what you guys are counting. You guys are counting my pockets on that. But what you don't realize is I didn't start making, I, I had to work for free for a year and a half. I had to work for not free, but barely anything for two years. Every single week dropping content, staying on top of my, my grind, dropping content, hoping my channel finally blows up. And my channel's five years old. It never really did blow up. It grew very slowly. And um, I just stayed consistent and it grew and it grew. I'm, I'm where I'm at right now because I was consistent. I never had like a, a pop or anything like that. But now I'm making some decent money with YouTube. But what you got to realize is you got to divide that by five years, not by one. So you still not really making no real money. And it works the same way with products, right? So even so just because it costs you 
let's say a clipper costs twelve dollars to make and they're selling it for eighty, right? Oh man, they 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 take an advantage. Well, well, hold on, hold on, guys. What they're really pocketing after they pay all their expenses, all their bills, all their salaries, they're probably making fifty dollars off of that. But wait, the distributor needs a portion. The wholesaler needs a portion. So they're probably really making ten dollars off of that eighty. They're, that's probably what they're really pocketing. The other side is it probably costs them a hundred thousand to develop that product. So before they even start making money, they got to sell 10,000 pieces first. Whoa. And after they f sell those first 10,000 pieces, because they spent all that money on patents, on R&D, on engineering, on molds, on tooling, bef you know what I'm saying? Before they, they make all that money back, finally, they're they, they going to make $10 a piece. And you guys are talking about, yo, they're making all kinds of money, all kinds of margins from these products. That's not really how it works. And I was, I'm, and I'm guilty of that. I used to think the same way. But now that I've been doing it, I'm like, yo, these companies are really risking it all. If it was easy, if, if it was as easy as having an idea, if it was as easy as having an idea, dropping a product, and then making sixty dollars off of a twelve dollar product it'd be a whole lot more people doing it for a lot longer so hopefully that's some insight for you guys man so um he said can you share about your desire to change your family tree i believe that's such an amazing uh, vision to have man Long story short, I don't want to spend too much time on this. I, I got a really fucked up family tree. I got a, and excuse my language. Hopefully no schools are playing this. But I got a really messed up family tree, man. I don't really have a lot to show. You guys have never seen my family. Y'all have never seen my cousins. Y'all have never seen my aunts or uncles or anything like that. I had, I had an amazing family. And then things just went, you know, to a, to a place where... It hurts, you know what I'm saying? And and for me, I never want my family to be in a position where um, where I influence that. You know what I'm saying? I always want to be in a place where I can give my kids a platform. I don't care if, they, if my son wants to be a barber, but I want him to have this. I want him to have this to understand that whatever his passion is, he can make happen. Um, that's the most important thing. I want him to have the work ethic. I want him to be a part of everything that I do. I don't want to be a distant father. I don't want to be a, a, a missing father. I want him to have real relationships with all his family, with his cousins, with his uncles. And I don't want no drugs to play a part or, or hurt my family the way it's hurt my family. You see what I'm saying? Like, I got a brother right now that's doing life in prison. Yeah, I don't know this stuff, but like that's reality. That's my life. That's 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 my family tree. My brother is that guy. You know what I'm saying? Like, so I never I never want to put my 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 family in a position where they ain't have a choice but to risk their life to be in a better place. You know what I mean? Um, and that's that that's the biggest thing for me. Um, I want my kids, kids. I want my grandchildren to know who I am. I don't know who my grandfather is. My family tree's all fucked up. You know what I'm saying? Um, so Blake. Blake with the super chat. Shout out to Blake. My man said uh, um, a little something for all of you have done over the years. Help me elevate my craft. Nothing but respect for you. Boss. Hey, I appreciate it, man. Thank you, bro. If you got a question, Blake, let me know. And I appreciate the super chat, bro. Real talk. Uh, Jeezy is in the building, my bro. Day one, people don't know the, that part. You got to work for free for a long time before you can see money. Don't look at where I'm at now. The struggle to get here is real. Yeah, you got to divide that by the years. You know what I'm saying? Jeezy might be making some money now, but you got to divide that by the years. It, it's straight up. By the years, the sacrifice, the work. Forget the time. The sacrifice, the work, the money spent. You got to understand, we were spending... We were spending a year's worth of, yo, the amount of money I spent on my laptop and my camera, bro, during that time, that was a month's worth of work. During that time, 
I gave up a month's worth of work to get that new lens and that new laptop so that I can drop videos. People don't think about that. And that's why it's not so easy for everybody to build their channel. That's business. You got to work for free, man. <laughs> can you work for free for the next 10 years? So, I'm a, Let me answer Moy because he's been asking this question a lot. Moy said, how many years um, did you work before you opened the shop? One year. One year, and I was blessed too, man. I, I was in a shop where that was very toxic, a shop owner that, that didn't want to see us grow. And I said, we got to get out of here, bro. I'm with you. Uh, but it's worth it at the end. I say that, but at the same time, there's some people who never see it. There's some people, I'm blessed, man. I'm blessed because there's 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 a few people out there I can say that have taken the road, have gone through the shit, have 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 sacrificed and they never see it. They never see that light. That's rough. Just I don't care how persistent you are, there's some people I was persistent for a few years and then my channel started growing, really growing. Um, and I think Jeezy the same thing. He was persistent for a few years and his channel was really, really growing. There's some guys out there that have to be persistent for decades. And then they start it starts to pay off. I mean look at look at the story of KFC. The founder of KFC was persistent for sixty years. This man was this was an old man when his when his dreams finally popped when everything he was working towards finally popped could you imagine that but all you see is kfc whoa yosef with the with the super chat sony the barber been a barber for a year because of you hey thank you so much man congratulations sony the barber congratulations bro my man's been a barber for a year, passionate. I already know. You on this live, that's dope. That's dope. Um, he said, I want to be a barber, but it's hard to get your license working a full-time job. How do you transition from working a full-time 9 to 5 to being a barber? Like I said, sacrifice, bro. I had a full-time job. Minimum wage. For, my wife had a minimum wage job. She was pregnant. Sacrifice, bro. Uh, you're going you're gonna to lose. You, you're going to have to take a step back to make two steps forward. Josh, what up, bro? How you doing? You know what was crazy too is I could have shown y'all the uh, the Capital app too, cause I got I got I got this going. Hold on, you guys see my background. But this is the um, if you want to start learning how to pay it forward, bro. I believe this is it. This is the website right here, Capital. <clears throat> That's the website I use to to pay myself forward, to put my savings into automation so that the same way if you get a paycheck at a job, they take that money out first, then they pay you, and that's how you're able to save some money. Um, you can use this app to do the same thing for you. You know, you don't need you don't need a job or a boss to do that. There's, there's, we're in 2019. There's sources out there that can do it for you under your control. So that's the, that's the uh, website right there. Yo, technology is crazy. This live stream software I'm using right now is crazy. <laughs> All right, I'm going to, I'm going to stay on for two more minutes, guys. Two more minutes. And yeah, the likes would be amazing. I appreciate it. Thanks, Blake. Appreciate that, bro. 
My man Blake said, yo, let's get some likes. Come on. Come on, guys. Let's get some likes in here. Uh, what educational classes does Tomb 45 offer and would you recommend it for beginners? Um, I've sold down a lot on, on like the touring and stuff. We do stuff at the hair shows. Go to the hair shows, definitely. Any of the big hair shows like Orlando Premiere. I know ISSC is coming up if you're on the West Coast and you're in LA. Um, I do my hands-on classes, but I'm, I don't do a lot of them. And they sell out in like less than 24 hours. If I announce a, a hands-on class... It literally sells out in 24 hours. Um, so every now and then I'll announce it on, on Instagram or on Facebook. Or if you, I, I always announce it first in the Tomb 45 Academy. I give like 10 hours maybe. Um, and then after that, I drop it to the public and that thing is gone. Um, and aside from that is is YouTube the and the Academy and Foundations. <sighs> Alright guys, but I'm going to get off this thing, man. I appreciate it. 150 something people live. That's crazy. I appreciate it. Uh Monday, Thursdays, dropping a video every Monday and Thursday. So if you're not subscribed, you don't have your notifications turned on, please do so. Because at some point on Mondays, at some point on Thursdays, dropping something. Um, Robert, what is your Instagram? What is, what is your Instagram real quick? Am I watching the Deontay Wilder fight? Probably not. I, I, I got to go to bed. I, I'll, see it. I'll see the results in the morning. Let me let me switch to my my nine fives. Switch to my nine fives. Ah, oh, there we go. So glary. Damn, the thumbs down came through in the building. Thumbs down, bro. Where you at? Okay, I got you. Look, I got you. Screenshot. Did I get it? All right, I got the screenshot. Yo, y'all have a good night, man. SUNY, I'm screenshotting yours as well. Thank you for the uh, the love. Y'all have a good night.